Hi guys, welcome to Snakes and Adders. Today we're continuing our intermediate series by discussing Epicrate centria, or the rainbow boas. The nominate form is the Brazilian rainbow boa, which is Epicrate centria centria. This guy is a Colombian rainbow boa, which is Epicrate centria morus. There's the silver species, which is Argentine rainbow boa, which is Epicrate centria alvarezii. There's the Paraguayan rainbow boa, which is Epicrate centria crassus. And there is also the Katinga rainbow boa, which is Epicrate centria assisi. Uh, very, very occasionally you may come across something called a Peruvian rainbow boa, which is essentially a slightly bigger, darker red, higher black contrasting patterned uh, Brazilian, which is Epicrate centria gaijai. Uh, there's two other subspecies you're hardly ever going to see, so we're just going to put them to one side, but I'll mention them here, which is the Espirito Santo, or Epicrate centria hydrophilus, and then there's uh, Epicrate centria polylepis, which is the central highland rainbow boa as well. But like I say, we never come across those. So these are an intermediate level next step snake. Why? Well, humidity. Generally, it plays a bit of a complicating factor. Uh, rainbow boas are true jungle snakes. They enjoy higher humidity, particularly when they're young. So if we keep them too dry, the risk is they can dehydrate or even develop respiratory infections because we do need to keep their lungs sli slightly moistened. As they get older, the reliance on humidity does drop and it's really as babies that we've got to be quite careful. Um, they are only modestly sized snakes and uh, make fabulous pets and if handled regularly become totally tame. Um, generally the sizes vary between sort of four and six feet depending on the subspecies. The largest generally is the uh, Peruvian or the Brazilian which max out at around six feet uh, and then the smallest is usually like the Argentine at about three and a half to four feet. They feed readily, um, they don't really pose any huge issues in captivity as long as we keep the humidity right. As with a lot of the South American species, they shun higher temperatures, which is odd when you think of a jungle, but actually a lot of these snakes really don't like high temperatures. And that goes for emerald tree boas, Amazon uh, tree boas, uh, the rainbow boas, uh, the um, Brazilian smooth snake or false water cobra. All of these snakes really don't like high temperatures. We're going to have <coughs> a maximum basking temperature of about 30 Celsius, whereas a lot of the boas and pythons from Indonesia that we've discussed, they're like 32, 33 degrees Celsius. These guys, not so much, they don't really like it. Um, as youngsters, we're definitely going to need a moss box. Usually, we'd probably actually rear these in a rack system, just so that we know that because of the arrested airflow, the humidity is going to be higher in the enclosure, which helps keep their lungs active, stops them getting the RIs. As they get bigger, there's less of a reliance on this. We can move into our big display vivs, but there's always probably going to have to be the presence of a humidity box there to help them shed their skin. Um, they really are fabulous snakes. This guy gets a bad rap. This is a Colombian rainbow, and everyone kind of gets down on them because they're not the brightest patterned guys in the world and all the rest of it. But I think they're really attractive. They're gorgeous snakes, really. Lovely, rich chocolate brown. Some will retain more bits of pattern than others. Uh, fantastic. The, the, the one that everybody's after though is either the Peruvian or Brazilian which are bright orange and blacks with these oscillations down their back. They look the nuts um, and like I say they, they really aren't problematic as long as we get the humidity right uh, which is why we tend to list these as a next step snake. They are live bearers. Their babies are born uh, in a very thin embryonic sac which they immediately burst out of upon being born. Um, they generally the females are going to be pregnant for between 90 and 125 days usually the girls will keep at a slightly higher temperature while they're pregnant probably approaching 31 32 degrees um, they, they, they honestly just really good really good pets lovely and soft natured there's no aggression uh, just superb um, substrate would be orchid bark adult viv would probably be a 48 by 18 by 18 viv uh, we could use either ceramic heat emitters or uh, spot bulb or there's a new product on the market by Arcadia called the deep heat projector which would be perfectly good for heating them. We've got the orchid bark, we'll have a moss box in there for the humidity, decent sized water bowl, some branches which they will use, some plants just to make it look nice uh, and you'll have an absolutely fabulous pet. They're long lived, you should easily get 15-20 years out of a rainbow boa without any problems whatsoever. Um, and yeah, just, just great stuff. Uh, maybe consider 
that you're going to have to raise your baby in a rack situation, trying to put a baby into a vivarium, they're probably not going to get on with that too well, um, simply because they're probably going to have bad shed. Humidity is just not high enough. Um, it's a similar story with like blood pythons, white lip pythons, uh, Bismarck pythons that need the higher humidity as youngsters, but that reliance does drop off as we get bigger. So have a research. The family is Epicrates. Uh, the species is Centria, and then we've got all the subspecies that were listed. We'll make sure we'll include that information in the description of the video. Um, we'll keep producing the videos. Check out the website, which is www.snakesandadders.go.uk, and see what we're all about. Cheers.